Yo, I think it's live now. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear all right. I didn't test anything out for this. Tested nothing out. Uh, first live stream in like two years. And you guys are on a little bit of a delay. So I'm just sitting here talking until you guys are like, yo, the delay's over. We kind of can't hear you. Um, it's also, yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Is the volume too high, too low? Just right? We good? All right. I'm going to take that as we're good. I got a little tea here. Awesome. Awesome. Sorry for the um, StreamYard logo up in the up in the top here. Um, well, my mouse is like a little bit off. Ooh, that's gonna be weird. Uh, the mouse like that you guys see is a little bit off what I see. That's a little strange. But sorry about that StreamYard logo up there. That uh, you know, that's just what comes with the free plan. Uh, and I've got you guys set up over here so I can see comments. I've got my out of the park screen here. Is the out of park out of the park screen big enough for you guys or do i need to go full screen with it and like take myself off ducks are cute ducks are cool yeah um cute too yeah i think ducks cute yeah i think that's fair i think that's fair now geese i don't think geese are cute geese are cool but like probably not cute but ducks cool and cute uh that's my that's my good that's my take screen is fine all right if anybody if anybody prefers it live or uh full screen We'll take a vote um but you know this way we can talk might have might have like a special guest or two pop in you never know uh i threw the through the studio link out to a person or two and said uh and said come on come on by if you want to um <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah kyle bradish uh he's an 80 out of 80 the only pitcher in the game who's an 80 out of 80 i've heard uh geese are heroes in san diego why are the geese heroes in san diego that's i mean i don't mind geese i'm fine with geese i saw some geese recently uh and they were cool but but i didn't feel that they were heroic i felt that they were just kind of like hanging out animals they were cool my daughter was pretty pretty intrigued by them she might have considered them a hero because they kind of made her day oh it's a padre thing Wow, I don't I don't know anything about that. Let me uh take my tea bag out of my tea. But I feel like like that's a I feel like that's a good segue into talking about baseball teams. So I just started like a standard game here to talk through some teams. I'm unemployed. This Diamondbacks thing is just the default. They're not one of the teams. Uh and I simmed up till through opening day. So that way, like all the contracts when we're talking about teams, like all the guys who are on league minimum deals are on the roster with their contracts. So I did that. And, and so that's where we are. So I'm unemployed and I guess I need to go into commissioner mode. Oh, I am in commissioner mode so I can go and hire myself for the different teams I'm going to talk for, talk about, uh, you know what? So what order am I going to do this in? I haven't really decided that. Um, so, you know, William, I saw you commenting. Uh, I will say, let's go ahead here. Look at the available jobs. It's, it's obviously all of them. And so the first team I'm considering, William, it's, it's the Blue Jays. Um, and... Let me let me tell you about why it's the Blue Jays. Uh, William is is in the comments here. Who's a who's a Blue Jays fan, longtime loyal watcher of the channel, patron, and also uh, a uh, a beta tester. So it does a lot for the game. And he, but William, you made some re some really good arguments about the Blue Jays. They weren't weren't even on my radar as a team to do. And and then you kind of like talked me into it. What, so here's why the Blue Jays are kind of like in my final four now of teams uh, I'm considering. Like, because they're and you guys can tell me if you think these are bad takes about where I think the Blue Jays are. Like, I feel like four years ago or so we were like, oh, the Blue Jays are about to go on a run, right? They had Guerrero coming up, Bichette coming up, 
And then they, you know, that's when also they, uh, they, they went out, they, they traded for Barrios at some point in there. Then they signed Gossman. They signed Springer, like not, not all in that order. Um, Java Slinger, is that, is that Ken? You look like Ken if you're not. Um, so I feel like the Blue Jays kind of peaked. Like, like I feel like their moment could be over before they like fully peaked. I know they've been in the postseason several times the last couple of years, but if you had asked me like four or five years ago, as Vlad was coming up, as Bo was coming up, like if this was gonna kind of like how it was gonna look a few years in, I'd be like, well, that's kind of probably like a bit of a disappointment. So I guess the question now is like with the O's where they are and the Rays always being the Rays and, you know, the Yankees always being the Yankees, like has the Blue Jays moment passed, right? Like, and I think it's, it's, they're kind of like at a crossroads, right? Cause you got Vlad for through 2025, you got Bo through 2025 uh, I mean, they've got Bassett. You got Springer, who's getting older. Gossman, who's getting older. Barrios, who has just kind of like been okay. Yeah, I think that's that's a good phrase. It's an inflection point. Like, what are you going to do with these guys? Like, I think there's a chance that like the Jays extend their window like five years if they if they things work out for them and they make moves that work out. I also think there's a chance in like three years that they're like rebuilding. Uh, maybe not like a full teardown rebuild, but yeah, I think I think inflection point is a good way to put it. Uh, I, you know, I will be honest. I'm an O's fan. The Blue Jays, uh, you know, they threw Beard, our left fielder, Hasun Kim, in what was that the 2014 or 2016 uh, postseason? You know. Cito Gaston. Do you guys know the story of Cito Gaston, the all-star game at Camden Yards? And I think it was 1993 and Mike Mussina, the O's ace was on the team and Cito Gaston didn't put Mike Mussina into the game in Camden Yards. Do you realize like in the age of social media and like 24 hour news cycle, how much the world would burn if that happened now? So there was a big, I mean, there were t-shirts and chants at Camden Yards. Cito sucks. So let me just be clear. William, you've softened your your fanhood of the Jays has softened me on the Jays. I don't really like the Jays because they uh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh Kim is uh also I, I loved Kim. I wish he'd gotten a, a longer leash from from Buck. Um yes, and it was all also the postseason where Buck didn't use Zach Britton. Uh man, Buck Buck Showalter did so much for the Orioles organization. Uh, and was so great. And I think that that Britain moment in the postseason, as well as like the way that final year went, uh, where they weren't tanking, but got the post first overall pick and got Adley with Buck. I, you know, I hope that doesn't, uh, overshadow how much Buck did for the organization, but that Britain decision was absurd and possibly like a fireable offense, but he was, he meant a lot to the organization and I'm a big Buck Showalter guy. So anyways, yeah, I think the Jays all of a sudden it's like, oh shoot, has our moment passed us by? Like, what are we going to do with Vlad? What are we going to do with Bo? Like they're both young enough that you could extend them, but they haven't. Vlad of course has kind of been up and down too bad. Like it's not a stat cast league. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what direction the Jays are going to go in the next two to three years. And that's kind of why I think they'd be an interesting team. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, man, Cito sucks. Didn't pitch Mike Mussina in the all-star game in Camden Yards. And so, you know, getting, getting over that fact is probably the biggest hurdle to me doing the Blue Jays. So I don't necessarily have a ranking. I think there's probably, you know, I go back and forth. I, I don't think the Jays are like in the top two of my top four. I think they're third or fourth. Um, yeah. Yeah. No extensions. Like what, what is this? Is Peter Angelos running this team, you know, or no, I'm sorry, John Angelos. Uh, because Peter actually, when he was the control person did spend some money and did extend like Adam Jones and earlier years extended a lot of money. It was once John Angelos became the control person that they just stopped spending money. They just hired the right people and stayed out of the way. 
but yeah, uh, exactly. There's just so many directions that this franchise could go that I, I think they'd be an interesting team to do. Now their farm system, there's not a ton of help on the way, according to out of the park. Um, you know, obviously really good pitcher here. Top prospect Martinez in out of the park. Uh, you know, I don't know. He's definitely not a shortstop. Is he a second baseman? Maybe. Could he play third base? Maybe. Um, you know, this, this farm system is not, not loaded. Um, Arun Namala has a long way to go if he's going to become good. So, you know, he's got, he's got a lot of developing to do. You know, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not, uh, I'm not really sure that their help is coming through the farm system or a lot of help is coming through the farm system, which is why I say like, you know, they could make the right moves. Um, you know, I thought about doing 100% scouting accuracy for this discussion, but I didn't because I didn't know if I didn't want to do it. Cause I know people, uh, well, really Arjun is how you say his name. I went to, Oh, I'll get back to that. Really? I went to high school or no middle school with a guy who spelled his name A R J U N and it was Arun was how they pronounced it. Huh. Okay. He's Arjun though. That's good to know. Um, I didn't, so I didn't want 100% scouting accuracy. I thought about it actually, but like, I didn't want to do that for people who play the game and don't want to know the scouting actually with 100% in case you're playing Sims and all that. So that's why I didn't do it. But I think it's, I think it would be useful here, but I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, yeah. I'm not really down with a 50 range at second base. Give me 60 plus unless yeah, you're an all-star bat. So do you guys have any other, you know, I mean, I will say Kevin Gossman, if you have any other Blue Jays thoughts, I'm about to move on to the next team. So, you know, let me know. Uh, Kevin Gossman is one of my favorite Orioles of all time. Like he's one of the main appeals to going, to Toronto for me. He's still an elite pitcher and one of my favorite pitchers of all time. So that's that's a big, big sell for me uh, for going to Toronto. Uh, offense wise, you know, I don't, I, I like Bo, I like Vlad, um, Kiermeyer, whatever. He's a great defender for out of the park. And Varsho, I like a lot. Alejandro Kirk is a legend. I mean, that guy's great. Love him. But uh, Gossman would be the main selling point. Uh, yeah, I say Varsha is probably my second guy. I think I shared this in a video a while back. It was it was several years ago when he was a Diamondback prospect and I was in a Dynasty Fantasy Baseball League. He was in like A ball. And I read an article about him and I added him on my team. So I've been with him since the beginning. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of comments I didn't keep up with here. Sorry if I. Uh, Sorry if I missed some of some of you guys. I was I was I got the the comments here. I got the out of the park screen here, so I'm missing some as you're going out. So, but anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the comments. Uh, man, Jay's too easy. What do? You, why? Because of their budget? Because like I don't think they're too good. I mean, they do have a huge budget, but like I don't know. Like they they have. I don't think they in the division they're in. I don't think they're too good. Um, also, like I understand that some people want to watch like more of like a, a a challenging sim. I don't necessarily need to do it based off of how challenging it is. Like I've, I mean, I think I've done that with some a rebuild of the Orioles way back in the day. Uh, the Royals was a, a bit of a challenge. Who else? The Tigers. Um, so yeah, but I understand what you guys are saying. But I don't think, especially in that division, and. Uh, the the kind of like um the decisions they have coming up i think uh yeah i don't i think they'd be really interesting <laughs> i mean go yankees i'm, I'm not going to do that i'm not going to do that uh I had a couple of people say a's uh i'm not going to do that i think you know my out of the park 21 sim was a uh, an O's full rebuild when the O's were terrible, right? Back, they still had... I mean, that rebuild had kind of started. So I feel like the A's would be kind of similar to that, of like, it's just torn down to the studs, you got to build it back up. But A's fans do deserve nothing but happiness and a better owner. And that whole situation sucks. But anyways, uh, let's get on to another finalist. Uh, you guys are just throwing out names. Is, are those are your guesses? 
I should do a Met save and use Uncle Steve's money properly. Uh, so this this next team was a late entry. To be honest, I was watching MLB TV the other day, and I was like, you know what? I really like this team. I want to look at them. They were I had a final three, and now it's a final four because I watched a Padres game the other day, and I was like, what are the Padres going to do? I will say the Padres have had kind of like a special place in my heart for a while now because, you know, one, it was good to see a small market team spend a bunch of money. Did, did they get a World Series? No. Uh, did they cut payroll now? Yeah. But like things could get real ugly here, possibly. I mean, Xander's 31. Look at this contract. Uh, Manny's 31. Look at this contract. T Tatis, he's going to be Tatis. Darvish is 37. Like, look at this contract. Like, there's some really good pieces there, but like, Tatis is obviously still prime, right? Still peak. Uh, Xander, Darvish, Machado, still all good players, but all post peak. Like, Manny is post peak, uh, age wise. Like, maybe he'll randomly put up a seven war season, but he's. This could get this situation could get ugly, but I think they'll, you know, AJ Preller is uh, really creative. I think they'll continue to find a way to uh, to stay competitive. But <laughs> you don't want to look at the Padres' contracts. Uh, you know, they've got they've still somehow got a good farm system. I mean, come on, is it Salas or Salas? Um, Salas, uh, you know. Would you do this where you hold on to the bad contracts? I think to an ex extent, Caleb, yeah. I wouldn't just like unload everybody, right? Um, yeah, I would try to keep it realistic in some way. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't get rid of Manny. Manny's my guy. Right. I have Jackson Merrill too. Like, so they're in a situation where they could have some really, really bad contracts in a few years, but they also still have like a really cool farm system. And, you know, Robbie Snelling, how's he looking in this game? Pretty good. Wow, that curveball could could get good. Dylan Lesko still looks decent. It was a guy who they drafted in the first round when he was injured, right? Like, didn't he fall in the draft to them? Oh, it doesn't say where he was drafted. I'm pretty sure he was going to be like a higher pick, and then he was injured, and they, they drafted him. I think that's that dude. Um... So, yeah, so that's where I'm at with the Padres. Like, I love Joe Musgrove and I love Dylan Cease. Michael King is cool. You Darvish, we'll see what that contract does. This bullpen, I don't really know what, what's up with this bullpen. I don't know if it's going to gonna work. Um, <laughs> see if, yeah, it is kind of funny how the Padres, like, they just sign guys to long-term deals and then decide they're not shortstops anymore. Like, they signed Tatis, like, oh, oops, nope, you're going to play outfield now. They signed Bogarts, oh, like, oops, you're a second baseman now. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, man, I'm going to make you buy the game again. I mean, yeah, it's, it's worth buying if you haven't played it in a little while. Uh, the development lab, I think I haven't played around with that, but just the concept is worth buying the game for. Uh, so that's the second, that's the second team I'm, I'm thinking about. You guys got, uh, okay. Okay. Thanks, Damien. Yeah. I thought, yeah, and he was, I think, expected to go higher. He would have gone higher if not for the Tommy John, right? And he fell, and it was like, who's going to take him? And it was the Padres because the Padres are badasses and always just do cool stuff. And the Padres, A.J. Preller GMs as if, like, we do in Out of the Park with, like, no house rules to, like, keep it realistic. He just does, like, whatever he wants. And he's like, sure, I'm going to sign Xander Bogarts to, like, a 19-year deal. Eighty million dollars per year. I, I, it, the Padres are a lot of fun to root for. I think their fans realize that they're they're lucky uh, to have a team that's fun to root for. Um, yeah. So, should we? Uh, you guys get any more Padres questions? Should we? Uh, should we keep it going? Well, Claudio here from Brazil. Good evening to you from Brazil. Good evening from uh, Maryland. That's where I am. And that picture behind me, that's Adam Jones, by the way. That's autographed. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Like these long-term contracts and how to stay competitive. Um, 
I think could be. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's fun. That, that's that's a fine enough point. But I think Soto obviously just wasn't gonna wasn't gonna sign there long term. And and some of those contracts are bad. But like, I think Soto. I think it was clear Soto wasn't gonna sign, and that's why they dealt him. And they made the best of like a bad situation that maybe was a little bit their doing. But like. I don't blame them for not keeping Soto for this year. They went all kind of like all in for a bit, um, but I get it. I think it's a fair, fair criticism, but I think there's a little bit of but there. Sam, yeah, uh, where, where, where that? Oh, here it is. This is one. Uh, yeah, I think this is my first time live in like two or three years. Um, I don't. Is that a hot take? Um, wild overpayment. That seems a little. Uh, that seems a little strong to me. I don't think it's a hot take, though, William. I think it's a strong take. It's a strong take. Who are the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers, Alec? That is that like a um, Mariners farm team he played for? Like before he got traded to the O's? I have no idea who those guys are. Yeah, that's true. Mejia looked like he was coming... Uh, I'm just trying to keep up with some of these comments. All right. All right. So, yeah. So, Padre, So we've got Blue Jays. We've got Padres, right? Um, who do you want to go? Who should I go to next? Should I go to the alphabetically? Should I go in alphabetical order? Oh, okay. Alec, got it. Got it. Used to be a Mariners farm team. I was like, I, I don't know that team. So it must be somebody he played for before being traded to the O's. Or he's playing an independent ball now, and I had no idea. No, I don't think he's playing at all. He's Adam Jones has a podcast now for the Baltimore Banner, which is like a local paper here. Uh, Denton, Denton, I want to be, I want to be up front with the Giants are not in the Final Four. I did think about them for a while, but the, I don't want you sticking around if you're just waiting for the Giants. They're they're not in the Final Four. I did do a Giants sim, I don't know, like last year where I took over with like in Barry Bonds, like early two thousands. That's out there somewhere. Um, so yeah, uh, there there is some Giants content out there, but it, it's not it's not going to be the Giants. So should I go all right alphabetical order or reverse alph alphabetical order by city name for the last two? <laughs> Ooh, uh, both teams. Okay, both teams are American League. Both remaining are American League. Reverse alphabetical order by the city name. Got it. I don't have a coin to flip. Nobody has coins. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, I don't, I don't have any coins. I don't know if I have any coins in my whole house. Um, all right, cool. I'll go in reverse. Two people said reverse uh, alphabetical. Army, the Guardians are, are not it. Sorry. Um, all right, let's go. We're going to go to Seattle. That's my that's my next team. I would say over the last several months, they've been the front runner for my sim. I don't know. It's 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 close now for me. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about Seattle. I mean, first of all, we could all sit here the whole sim and make fun of. Uh, I want to say AJ Preller, but that is not their GM's name. And now I'm totally blanking on their GM's name. What's their GM's name? You guys will tell me that in 30 seconds when the delay catches up. Um, and I'm going to go like, right, of course that's, but the 54% comment, he's like, we try to win 54% of the time. And we, uh, we we did our Jerry DePoto. Thank you. Thank you. DePoto. Uh, <laughs> We try to win 54% of the time, and we're doing our fans a favor by not winning a World Series. Now, I think I know what he was trying to say, and I actually don't think he's wrong. But, dude, dude, you don't say that the way you said it. Like, Public Relations 101, Jerry DePoto. Like, I think what he was trying to say... Oh, Hollander's the GM. DePoto's... Okay, so DePoto's like the president or whatever. Um, you know, he's the head dude. Uh, like 
I think what he's trying to say is, look, we're trying to give ourselves as good of a chance to win a World Series over the next 10 years. So what we're going to try to do, or whatever, five years, 10 years, what we're going to try to do is win. We're going to shoot for 54% of the time because that is like we don't have to mortgage the future to win that much, and it gives a shot at the postseason every year. And I think what he was, you lost my audio. Oh, no. Just you? Or did everybody lose it? Uh, is the audio? All right. Still have audio. All right. Cool. 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 All right. Oh, trying to unclick comments before they. So, yeah, I think, yeah, in the three wildcard era, he's not wrong. You just can't say it out loud. I think what he's trying to say is basically like, look, if we try to win 60% of the games one year, uh, like we're going to mortgage the future to do that. And we're doing our fans a favor by not mortgaging the future and going all, all, all in one year because we want to give ourselves five or 10 shots at this thing. I think that's what he was meaning to say um, or what he meant, but he said it. Um, <laughs> he said it in the dumbest way possible. So that's one thing Seattle has going for it is we can just make fun of that the entire sim. Like I can reference the 54% every second episode, right? I think another thing is uh, Seattle is one of my favorite cities. It's one of the cities I went to on my honeymoon. Uh, I went, I rode a train cross country one time from DC to the West Coast and spent some time in Seattle. I, uh, you know, I was a little young for the, gr to be coming of age in the grunge era, but I had a, have a, sibling a brother who's seven years older who who was into music at that time and got me into all the seattle music so like seattle holds a special place in my heart because i grew up listening to all those bands pearl jam and nirvana and soundgarden and alice and chains and, and I, I still listen to that music a lot so seattle as a city has a special place in my heart i, I love the city of seattle if i didn't have so much family on the east coast seattle would be high on my list of places to live although it's like borderline not affordable to normal people uh <laughs> so the team now all right we've, we've talked about how we can make fun of depoto seattle's a great city we can have like uh you know jerry cantrell and eddie vetter come sit in the box with us during games but the team i mean first of all there's obviously julio right carter we're on our third team we've gotten uh we've done the blue jays and the padres we're on the mariners now uh Oh, wow. Ooh, wow. That's mean. Uh, so it, obviously Julio is, is the, is the, the centerpiece, right? Like that's, that's the reason you're going there. He's a 70 range center fielder, according to OSA or no, my head scout, both guys. Uh, he's a 70, he's a franchise player. He's locked up long-term. Is this contract, right? Like this doesn't have the second, the huge escalators in it, right? Like if you, if the contract gets extended, I don't think that's totally the contract we'll we'll fix it if it's not when we go in if i end up being the mariners so julio's the centerpiece of of any mariners team that's that's obvious um do they have a long-term plan at shortstop you know jp crawford's 29 uh and you know center and short is a big big part of any franchise i'm not sure cal raleigh i mean fun dude fun name decent player uh hopefully we'll hit lots of home runs he's a fun player i like him after that, like I like Luke Rayleigh a lot, if for nothing else than the Nuke Rayleigh memes when he hit a home run on like Instagram and Twitter. I don't know if that still happens now that he's in Seattle, but he was a member of my fantasy team last year for a little bit when he was hitting bombs for the Rays. So I like Luke Rayleigh, but I think this team is um, good. I think they have some really good young pieces coming. But I think it's going to take some work. Yeah, their pitching is obviously like awesome, which, believe it or not, is actually true, even though Austin Voth is here as their fifth starter. Um, you know, Kirby, Gilbert, Miller, Luis Castillo, uh, Wu. How long is, is he? Is this real? Is he only out two weeks in real life or is this injury longer term? I thought it was longer. 
Um, oh, it's the correct contract amount, but should have player options. Got it. Yeah, you can't put that in. Okay. We'd find a fix for it. We'd find a fix for it. Um, you know, and and like like Toronto with Gossman, um, Luis Castillo is is one of my favorite players. If you watch the channel, you probably know that. Uh, I, I love Luis Castillo. I've watched him since his time on the Reds. I think it started during like the Orioles down years when the Orioles were terrible and tanking and rebuilding and like, you know, call me not a real fan, but I don't watch. I didn't watch every game when they're going through that nonsense. I mean, I kept up with them and I watched them, but I watched a lot of other teams too during that time. And the Reds, specifically Luis Castillo and his changeup, uh, which is really low in this game. Um, I, uh, I really latched on to Luis Castillo. Like I watched every one of his starts for like one season. I can't remember what year it was. Uh, I think it was 2019. Maybe I think 2019. I watched so many starts of his. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the O's were bad in 19. I didn't have any kids yet. Uh, Castillo was awesome. That was his coming of age season. Yeah. 2019. I, I watched probably 20 of his starts and I've, uh, Oh, Army, I didn't know that. I was about to say, I was going to say, I've not kept up with him as much in Seattle just because, like, the games are too late if they're on the on the West Coast, but still, like, one of my favorite players uh, to, to watch pitch, and I, he would be a main selling point for me in coming to Seattle. Now, a couple of you um, mentioned their farm system, which is just, yeah, we got Harry Ford is according to out of the park is their number one prospect uh, who just looks like a monster hitter who can also catch and play, play other positions for you. The 60 outfield range, only 45 infield range. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he could catch for you for sure. I'm probably, he, he could be some sort of utility guy who sometimes plays at second or third, maybe, but mainly he's just first, but then he could play the corners too. Uh, but but I think he's a catcher first when with that bat, especially Cole Young, the shortstop. Oop. So the scout here thinks he's only a 60, so he might be moving to second base if I were to take over this team. But another guy, uh, Ford is Biggio 2.0. Wow. Uh, like like Cavan or Craig? <laughs> Big difference. Uh, Cole Young. Uh, you know, I think is obviously could be a stud. Oh, this guy is fun. Lazaro Montez looks like, I mean, this guy might never, ever, ever make the big leagues and uh, in, in out of the park. Like, I think he, he looks like he could. Uh, but in, in real life, this guy could hit 70 home runs a year, not 70, you know what I mean? Or he might never like get out of, might never make it past triple A. This is a guy who is worth following in real life. Like I just actually kind of discovered him this off season looking at prospect stuff. And he seems like he's a lot of fun. He's uh he's all uh he's all power. He's all power. And if he makes it to the major leagues, he's gonna be a ton of fun. I need a sip of tea real quick. Um turns out talking for like 40 minutes straight, you should you should take a sip of a drink every once in a while. All right, so Montez Montez is a big selling point for me just because I love a dude who might not make the major leagues, but also might be the greatest power hit of all time. That I'm all in on those kind of guys. Uh, I'll draft them in out of the park sims, and uh, oh, ooh, wow, that's a, that's a good bit of info. Is he the next Jordan? Yeah. So Damien Colt Emerson is here, but uh looks kind of like not great in this game so it was interesting cole emerson where did they was he like a second round pick oh he's a first round pick i thought he was a second okay so first round pick in 2023 he's you know i there was a survey in this is real life not out of the park there was a survey of uh major league executives about different teams and their farm systems and the player who was named by MLB executives as the most underrated prospect in the majors was Colt Emerson. So I think that this would underrate him 
in the eyes of those executives who think Emerson is underrated. I think he ripped it up after he got uh, after he got drafted. The stuffiest guy in the entire organization. Well, I like a good stuff guy. I like a, a stuffiest guy. Um, Logan Evans. Okay. But yeah, so Colt Emerson, uh, I think is maybe going to be, if he continues his ascent in real life, is a guy who is going to be better rated in next year's out of the park. I think that I, I would bet money on him being better rated in next year's out of the park, which is a little bit of a bummer if you play as the Mariners this year, because I, I think I think he deserves a little better. I know it's based off of like zips and all that. And like I'm not saying that his ratings need to be tweaked. I think just think in general, based off of that survey and also based off of like his minor league numbers so far in very small sample, like he's an underrated dude who could come up. Um but yeah, I mean it all starts with this pitching staff though. And honestly, like Maybe the Wu injury changes this, but I think you got to, you might need to move out a pitching prospect for a stud hitting prospects. Um, so, yeah. Oh, occasionally prospects get touched up mid cycle. Yeah. I think you have to do like live starts, right? I remember the year that Gunner came on the map, like the out of the park uh, release. Uh, when it was released, Gunner was like a so so prospect. And then, like, by the end of the year, he was like, it was like real life. Like it was like, oh, this guy is actually not an average prospect. He's one of the best prospects. He's one of the best players in baseball. So yeah, maybe that'll happen to Cole Emerson if he just comes out and mashes. So I don't know. If I started as the Mariners, I think yeah, I think one of the first big moves I'd make is eventually trading pitching for hitting. Because I think I think we need more pieces here. Like Polanco is a decent placeholder. Um, Julio is Julio. Rayleigh, I think, is fine. Raleigh, I think, is fine. Crawford is okay. But then, like, the bottom of this lineup, like, there's so many improvements you could make. There's there's a lot of improving to do here in the bottom of the lineup and really get, like, a middle order, middle of the order bat today or something. They're getting a, a player update out this month. Oh, to, like, update prospects and stuff yeah i know I've, I've also seen on the um on the forums they said you know the prospects and the draft pools too are just kind of a, a work in progress at this point which i which i get um i mean i would love to get teoscar back i love teoscar hernandez uh a, an all-power guy who doesn't have a great control of the zone yeah they they age terribly but they're great they're a lot of fun when they're uh when they're in their prime so yeah, I would I would trade some pitching for some hitting immediately. I think not immediately, but that would be kind of I think what you would need to do, right? Like build around Kirby Castillo, and then decide who like your third starter is, and um, and then move on from there. Like I think I think if you have three awesome arms, you can then decide whoever your fourth is and make a package for just a guy who can come in and be a dude in the middle of your lineup. That would be. Ryan, hey, thanks for um, thanks for uh, listening at the gym, man. Okay, so Golden Boy, you just started playing out of the park. Um, you get into baseball in general, man. Getting into baseball is a lot of fun. Um, I'm glad the I'm glad the tutorials have helped, but uh, really like. Man, welcome to the world of baseball. If you're just getting into baseball, baseball is a lot of fun. I think uh, there are a lot of great baseball books out there, baseball movies. Um, I like I like hockey a lot too, not as much as baseball, but like in terms of like books, movies, like what, what do we have to call that content? I hate that word, content creator. I hate that as well. But in terms of like content to consume of a sport, I think baseball is the best, even even if it's not your favorite sport. Um. Oh, Taylor Ward would be a great trade option for the Mariners. That's that's true. If uh, you know, because obviously, oh, somebody did say earlier that I should save Mike Trout. Uh, you know, I the Fake Sports Dynasties channel is on here. That's my brother. Him and I did a Mike Trout, uh, get Mike Trout a ring. It was like a four series live stream where we took over the Angels and we we tried to get Mike Trout a uh, yeah yeah that's that's true. William agreed. Um, 
so we we did the, I want to say we did the Angels several years ago and saved Mike Trout. So I can't go save Mike Trout again. Maybe I'll save Mike Trout from the Angels with whatever team I play as and uh and trade for him and get him on board. Maybe we'll bring him into the Mariners in like 2026 and put him in the corner outfield just to mash in our lineup and play a decent left field. All right. So do you guys have any other questions about the Mariners? Uh, yes, out of the park 25 is out. Uh, it came out middle of March. Yeah. All right. Jinx. Yeah. Save Mike Trout by bringing him to Seattle. Better city, better team. Uh, and he might win. So yeah, I'm, I'm in on that. All right. So, you know, I don't think so. So the the Mariners and Jays were kind of like one two for me as I was thinking about this for a while um, of what team I'd be and oh, oh well okay well Mike Trout's gonna have to wave it to come to Seattle at some point in the sim um all right so no Army you don't know them too well that you know you drop so many good nuggets in here um y your your Seattle fandom is an is an asset here. Uh, so anyways, I don't think the last team is any surprise. And really it was, um, I went to an O's game the other day and, you know, I think a lot of you probably know I live near Baltimore. I've been an O's fan my whole life. Uh, and I really wasn't thinking of making them my sim. And then baseball season has started. I went to the game. I've been following their minor league teams. And if I wasn't playing a sim online, I would be playing as the O's like a hundred percent. No question. I made the remark to my wife the other day that this O's team and system right now is my favorite O's team ever. She was surprised by that. I And I told her all the, and she was also surprised. I was thinking of playing as the O's. She was like, you already did the O's, which I did in out of the park 21, which was 2020. And they were in a totally different spot. Uh, yeah, this O's team, O's team and organization is my favorite iteration of the O's ever. Um, I started, I was born in the 80s. So, you know, the fir my first favorite player I remember is Eddie Murray. Uh, I remember rooting for Eddie Murray. But then, the, you know, the, the 90s were kind of when, like, I remember following them. And so since, like, let's call it 1990, this is my favorite O's team ever. I liked the Buck Showalter era a lot with, like, Manny Machado, Adam Jones, Kevin Gossman, but the organization was never near what it is now. Now, would this be a challenge? Paul Spore. Hello. Paul, I sent you a different link um, if you want to come on in here. Um, so would the O's be a challenge? No, like, you know, in, in every like test sim that I run, like the O's are in or near the world series every year. So like they're set up to be monsters. I think I would do some things to make it, uh, to make it more challenging. I think I would shrink the postseason, So, I, you know, you're not guaranteed to make the postseason every year, but really this would just me, uh, make it fun. It would it would it would be the most fun. Now I think the O's have some interesting decisions coming up. Like let's go to their salaries page. Um, well, I couldn't find it for a second. Like you know I don't think Burns isn't going to resign. Like he said he's going to go to free agency. <laughs> uh, thank you. That is the best comment of the live stream. What are we going to do with Tony Kemp? Um, so oh, old school sports is here. Um. I assume if most of you are on YouTube at almost 9 p.m. Eastern time on a weeknight. Is this a weeknight? I'm off work right now for a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, it's a weeknight. I've lost track of the days. I assume you know who Old School Sports is. But if you don't, um, go uh, go check out Old School Sports channel. There's uh, a lot of good out of the park channel, out of the park uh, content on, on Old School Sports channel. And uh, he... Old School Sports puts out a lot more regular content than me. I think you're doing a Mariners sim right now, right? Um, hold on one second. 
I am returning a text message. Yeah. You know who else rules? This is Paul Sporer rules. I'm sure a lot of you know him of Fangraphs fame, of Out of the Park fame, of Twitch fame. Um, I'm, I'm sure you know Sporer's YouTube channel, Sporer's uh, Sleeper in the Bus podcast, uh, everything that he does. Obviously, if you don't, go check it out. Uh, but anyways, um, Paul, Old School Sports, thank you guys for uh, stopping by. So, yeah, I think the O's, so I don't think Burns is resigning in real life, but I think that's a decision we could make. But, you know, Santander, Mullins, Hayes, Mountcastle, all those guys, their, their time's kind of coming up soon. Their time's kind of coming up soon. And I don't think it's as easy as like, oh, you have all these prospects. You let all these dudes go. Maybe you do. But like, you know, if if some of the, if like Colton Kowser or Heston Kerstad ends up having is as good as um, Anthony Santander, like that's a like these this Santander the last two years, like that's a decent outcome. Right. I'm not saying I think their 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 ceiling is much higher, but like there's no guarantee that like Kowser or Kerstad or any of the other million guys, uh, um, any of the other, uh, guys, sorry, just, just, just texting over here again. Um, there's no guarantee that like a Kowser or Kerstad is going to come in and be better than Santander. Their ceiling is higher, but like they're still prospects. So I don't think it's a given that the O's let Santander, Mullins, Hayes, and Mountcastle all walk. I think all of them could, I think the majority of them will, but they have interesting decisions with those guys. There's also been what to do with like Gunner and Jackson. Now I would put some hardcore rules in place about extending Gunner, Jackson, and Adley, right? Like, so yeah, I mean, Kowser did put up 9.1 war in a sim of mine, uh, the other day, but, uh, they keep Mullins. Yeah, I think Mullins as a center fielder is probably the guy they're most likely to keep, I think, for sure. But he's but he's also the guy who would probably have the most trade value because he's center fielder. And like I guess it they gotta decide like it um is Enrique Bradfield Jr. like a replacement or not. And that's something we'd have to decide in the sim. So yeah, the O's are set up to be a dynasty, and it's not a challenge like in a way to rebuild them. But I think they'd be a ton of fun for those reasons. Do you guys what do you guys think this would be too easy of a sim? Like it wouldn't be fun enough because it would be too easy. Um, waiting for four years of service is a sweet spot. I think that used to be the case. Um, and I recorded something the other day. I don't think I put it out yet. No, I didn't. Um, but it was basically, it was 2025. So like holiday had like two years of service time. Gunner had three, I think. And like the extensions were kind of realistic. I mean, they were still low. Like, I want to say Gunner was like, I want to say it was like 12 years, 360 million. Uh, I want to say Jackson was like 10 years over 400 million and out of the park. Um, so. Yeah. And I hear you uh, guys that it would be too easy. So, you know, and I guess that comes down to like, you know, does it need to be easy? Like, and I think different people will find different things entertaining, right? Like, like about it. Like if it's too easy, it might not be entertaining or it might be more entertaining to watch me do my favorite team or now, I, I, you know, I'm going to put certain house rules in place though. I'm going to shrink the postseason, right? I think I might shrink it to like four teams. I've been thinking about that. Um, yeah, see, and that's kind of, this is one thing. It's just like, they have a, they have a lot of really interesting decisions and especially like, it's so like, for example, if I played Corbin Burns, I would want to re re-sign him, uh, but I would let him go to free agency and, and then re-sign him, try to re-sign him. So certain things like that. Um, I don't think their pitching is set up. As nicely as they're hitting, obviously, like that's an that's an obvious statement. So I think it'd be interesting to try to figure out which prospects you keep and which you trade. But like Kobe Mayo is one of my favorite O's prospects in a long time. Is he gonna play third base for me? Like, I don't know. He might play first base, he might play corner outfield. Uh 
I, I'm not I'm not really sure what I'd do with Kobe Mays. So it's decisions like that that I'm interested to see. Um, interested with the O's do in real life that I kind of want to uh, that I kind of want to play out myself. And like I was saying, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't I I doubt they heard it. Other than Paul, Paul heard it. Um, yeah, not sure I have to shrink the postseason. I guess it's just it would make it harder to make the postseason is my thought there, Mr. Spore, uh, to shrink it to four. You know, I don't think I'm guaranteed to win a World Series, but I think it would be like, say you went to four divisions and just the division winners got in or something. Like, you know, four eight team expand and do four eight team divisions. And you're in division with some really good teams. I think there would be years I wouldn't make the postseason. So stuff like that to make it more challenging. But like this farm system is just crazy stacked. Um, right. To sit, exactly. Decisions like where to play mayor or why I get paid the big bucks. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. So, okay. So I'll stop rambling about the O's because I could tell you about why I want to play as them for a while. Um, you know, like Gunnar Henderson, one of my is going to be one of my favorite O's ever, long term, probably. Jackson Holiday, Adley Rutschman, and who can forget Ryan Brohern? Uh, so yeah, so all right, so if you guys have just joined, or you, or if you haven't been here the whole time, and I'm looking this way because this is where the comments are. I have to look over here, going dual screen tonight. Uh, the teams I've run through that I'm considering are the Blue Jays. Long story short. Like, has their window passed? What are they going to do with Vlad and Bo? Uh, are Springer and Gossman going to gonna decline? I think uh, they could be in a full rebuild within a couple of years, or they could still be competitive depending on what they do. That's the, that's the bottom line on them. Padres, tons of young talent still coming. A lot of older guys would be could have bad contracts really soon. Um, and I love Manny Machado. That's the, the bottom line on them. Seattle. Great city, great salmon there that I could eat a lot. Great music town, uh, one of my favorite cities. And they have Julio Rodriguez, Luis Castillo, and but I don't think they're good enough to win as they are now. Um, and then the Baltimore Orioles, it's just it's my favorite team, and they've got to be in a more fun spot than just about any team in the game. So those are my those are my TLDRs on each of the four teams. Um, you know, one team that I would never consider being is the Nats, uh, just because I wouldn't, as GM, I wouldn't want to hear my fan base complain about the Masson deal all day. Uh, I got better things to do with my time than than listen to people whine about um, that. No, no, it's not a vote, but I'm interested to see. Uh, I'm interested to see what what people think because I was pretty hesitant to um i was pretty hesitant to do the o's again right and i also didn't know like jays like it's another east coast al east team like I, i'm just i am kind of curious to people think but i wouldn't say it's a vote all right um okay blue jays padres seattle baltimore san diego toronto m's or o's um yeah, and I think this is kind of like, yeah, as a Jays fan, yeah, is the window closing? Uh, that's kind of like the crux of why they're interesting to me. Because I think it's kind of like, all of a sudden I was like, oh, shoot, like the Jays window might be closing, especially with that division, man. Mariners, Nationals. Um, yeah, I, I, I do think I would be the most excited about the O's, but I'll have fun either way. You know, I'll have fun with any team, but yeah, I think, the O's would be the most fun for me, but I'll have fun with any of them. Um, Matt, the Reds aren't in here. Come on, man. There's no write-in ballots. Um, I did so. The Reds? No, I don't. I don't think the Reds aren't on my short list. I did do an Astros uh, sim, short sim. I think it was last year. Um, yeah. Jays would be the most difficult. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a fair perspective. I think that's fair. Cause especially like, what are you doing with flat and bow? Like, 
with the with the Padres, the difficulty is more like you already have decisions made for you that might not be good decisions. With the Jays, you just have a ton of decisions to make. Um, so yeah, when is the big reveal? I saw that up there, William. Um, well, I don't know if it's a big reveal, it's just a dude making a decision about a game. But uh, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know. Like, what? When do you guys plan to start your long term saves? Like, in terms of bugs and all that. Like, do you feel it's like worked out? Uh, it seems like this game is a lot more stable than previous versions for sure. But I still think there are some things with the draft classes um, and some other minor things. There's There are weird things with injuries. I've seen a couple of posts where people are basically like uh, too many players. Too many players were becoming fragile or wrecked. So a couple of you say after next patch. Okay. Um, one more patch. So yeah. So I don't know, maybe like in the next couple weeks, I'll decide what I normally try to do is like, um, <laughs> um, it may have to do, okay. So to do old school sports. That's good to know. So it seems like a lot of you are saying like next patch, you're going to do it. I think that's reasonable. And, um, so that would be like, you know, maybe in the next couple of weeks, I'll start it. One thing I try to do is not release it right away. I try to build up some episodes. So like I have some some stuff built up. Like if I go through times when I can't record, like I try to record a few episodes first. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, we're in April. Like by the end of the month, like I'll probably have episode one out. I would hope. Um, ooh, this is it. I don't. You haven't been messing with TCR more or less influence. Not there's, I don't think TCR affects the development lab because I think it's a little like one of the developers was saying this in the, the forum. You know, TCR is basically like, does your 14th round pick become really good out of nowhere? Or does your first round pick bust? It kind of increases the chances of that. Whereas the lab, I think, is more like, um, hyper focus on development. So uh, that's that's my take on that army. I don't know how the rest of you feel. Um, I'm a fan of one letter team. Okay, so but the O's are also in that. So it's O's or M's for you, Tommy. I'm seeing. All right, William. I don't know if I summed that up in the words that you're trying to say, uh, but yeah. So yeah, those are those are my teams. I don't know. Do you guys want me to look at anything else and mess around while we're we're on? There's, um, I got a, I got a little bit of time here still. Still, uh, it's nine o'clock Eastern. It's not quite my bedtime. I do try to get good sleep though, so we're not going to do like a a four hour marathon Paul Spore on Twitch stream. Um, oh, Jays are also yeah. I don't know. I mean, two of you said it but I've never seen the J's written as just a letter. So I'm, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to say, nah, they're not, they're not a one letter abbreviation in set. Like what is that called? Phonetically like sounds wise they are, but, but spelling. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy, I'm with you. They don't, they don't count. J's are, J's are not a one letter abbreviation. Only when you say it, if we're going one letter, a yeah, A's are Carter, but A's aren't, in the running here we're not doing the ace um oh what the preseason prediction is for each team yeah we can look at that where's the preseason prediction when the first thing is like not there isn't it over here yeah there it is um so the o's only 85 wins that would be a shocker that would be a real shocker the jays at 86 santander as a top hitter the only uh o's guy here now for uh, D backs is borderline. The wise. Um, oh wow, this is this is a good question that we need to get to at some point. Um, WrestleMania is this weekend, so the, just so you know, the way the uh, oh Matt, come on man, the Padres color scheme is great. We have very different opinions on color schemes, just based off of this one fact. Uh, fake sports dynasty. We talked all about Cito sucks earlier. We talked all about it. Could you imagine one thing I was saying is, could you imagine if that situation happened now in the age of everybody being 
connected online and feel the need to have about opinions about everything every hour of the day. Um, all right. So we'll talk mainly in a second and then we'll go down to like, we'll go from like, we'll go to like four viewers out, out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. So, so th this, this, uh, the predictions are just one sim. So it's just one random sim here. Uh, and in this one, the O's weren't great. The O's weren't great. The Blue Jays, I'm going to say they're overachieved. The Mariners won 92 games. Did I'm surprised Julio Rodriguez isn't here, but oh, Kirby and Castillo led the way. Got it. Got it. And then the Padres, the Padres won 82 games. Man, I think the Padres are in a tough spot. Like, I think they might not make the post. Like, just if you just simmed out out of the park without touching it and just let the AI do it, I think if you did a bunch of Sims of five years, the Padres wouldn't make the postseason most times. Um, William, tell me what? Hold on. Why is my, uh, listen, has that changed? Because I, uh, I thought it was, and I, I don't, uh, maybe I'm misquoting, but I thought it was Alex Murray that told me one time that the preseason predictions are just, it's just one, the, it just does one simulation and gives the results. Is that not right? Are you, you about to blow my mind with what it is? Because I I'd, I'd love to know that it's different than that. Because I've never paid a ton of attention to it. Because it's not like a projection, right? It's just like one sim. But I'll I'll give you a minute to type and and see what you're coming up with. For those of you who don't know what we're saying, what I was saying is these um these predictions I thought were just one sim, and William is saying it's not. Paul Spore still still online. Um, wow. Okay, William, you got to settle it for us now. Old school sports saying that's his uh, understanding. Hit us with the truth. Oh, you're on the bus. It also might be different in modern. Okay. Write up a comment later. Okay. All right. Looking forward to that. Um, anyways, uh, somebody asked what mania match I'm most looking forward to besides LA LA Knight. Uh Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. Um, would probably be and of course, like excited about the rock coming back. Um yeah, William, I hope you have do you have, do you have uh earbuds in? Or are you just broadcast? I hope you're just broadcasting this the whole bus. Just be like, "P.F. Holden's on, guys, listen up." Um, all right, but yeah. So those of you who are asking about Mania, the match I'm most looking forward to is the Rhea Ripley match. Second would probably be just because it's it's The Rock. Like I'm excited. To, it's it's not going to be great, but uh, I grew up watching The Rock, so not grew up, but all right. So do you guys have any other out of the park? Uh, I'm not a monster. Yeah. Uh, glad you have the earbuds in. Yeah, all fair takes, Tommy. All fair takes. I don't know if Becky's washed, but she's not going to win. And no, it won't be as good as Rhea, Rhea Charlotte, but it's still Rhea Ripley, so it's going to be great. Um, I, I, I got to think through my mania predictions better. I can't go, uh, can't go uh, off the cuff here. All right, so it seems like you guys were mainly... I don't know who was the favorite. It seemed like a lot of you were saying, do the O's because they're my favorite team. Luke, we didn't pick a team. You know, I don't know if we're picking yet. I was more just looking for feedback. Um, you know, it seems like a lot of you are saying, go with the O's because they're my favorite team. And then some of you are saying the Jays would be the most challenging. Mariners, I think the Padres got the least amount of love. Uh, it seems like I think Mariners and O's. Uh, man, it's 2 a.m. Go get some sleep. Some Yeah, live streams in the future could be fun. I used to do a lot more of them. Uh, I don't do as much anymore, but maybe I'll try to do some more this year. Um, it's been, it, I think it was like out of part 21. I did them pretty regularly, like even did playoff games. I mean, Vincent, yeah, like for sure. If I were playing, like, you know, like I said, if I were, if I were playing this offline, would would hundred percent be the uh would be the O's. 
Uh, but but I got different things to consider now, you know? Got to consider what people want to watch, too. But so maybe are we putting the Padres? Are they off? Are they on the chopping block? I think they got the least amount of votes. Um, yeah. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, that original OSIM that I did back when this channel kind of started as an accident, like didn't really plan to still be doing it now. Um, uh, yeah, I did a lot of live streams opening day every year. Opening day was a live stream. I mean, this was 2020 spring of 2020 everywhere was closed. Um, and I didn't have any children, so I had all the time in the world to do it, but tigers tigers were last year. We can't go back to Detroit two years in a row. Can't go back to that. Well, um, Bob Maldonado was an ap absolute legend in my out of the park 21 sim for those of you, uh, who, uh, who, who didn't watch that one. And there's no reason to go back and watch that sim. Uh, I think my, my future ones got a bit better. Well, do the team you'd want if no one was watching. So it's kind of like dancing play out of the park as if no one's watching. It's almost like dance, dance as if uh, no one's watching and sing as if no one can hear you. Okay, thanks. Thanks for uh, that advice and song lyric. All right, anything else you guys want to talk about? About wrapping up here, but I'll, uh, I'll stay on and talk for a few minutes if you guys want to. What is that? Kevin, what are the Dublin Hurricanes? OTP like no one is watching. If no one's watching the videos. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, the Royals. I was like perennial contender. I think I won a couple World Series and then we had one bad year. I was I went I had a random year with it. Like, I think they cut my budget and I went 70 and 92. And uh, and then we started the next season rough and they fired me. Um, no decision. I still got to think about it. I'm going to procrastinate on this. Maybe we'll come back and do a second live stream. Uh, I'm going over, over on that for sure. Uh, noted. Yeah. The O's fan wants me to be the O's. Yeah. That Royal Sim was, man, I just got fired out of nowhere. Just let it ride. Can't do that. Can't be fired button. All right, y'all. Um, I'll be back. You know, I'm thinking probably Mariners or O's. I think after your feedback, that's probably, th I think the Padres are out. Um, Phillies are fun. Uh, might try to do the Red Sox. I just did like, a, I think the Red Sox are pretty fun too. Uh, I did like two videos on them because I think they're kind of in a fun spot too. And it's my AL East bias. Um, <laughs> Tommy, you have a lot of good, a lot of good mania questions. Maybe I should just do a live stream during mania. Uh, no, nah, I can't. I got to watch it, um, and concentrate on it and then go to bed before it's over. It's way out. It'll go way after my bedtime. That's for sure. Uh, so yeah. So I think, I think the Padres are out based off your feedback. Blue Jays are probably third place. And then I got to say, I think, you know, Mariners and O's, uh, are, are, are the final two. All right, y'all. Um, I appreciate everybody watching tonight, always everywhere on the channel. Thanks for, thanks for doing it. Uh, thanks for commenting, interacting, and watching the channel. Um, I will, uh, I will see you guys in the next live stream or the next video or whatever. See y'all.